आई एम डॉक्टर पाटिल सुनील कुमार एस प्रोफेसर एंड हेड सिविल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट वालचा इंस्टीट्यूट टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर सो टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट डिजाइन ऑफ वन वे स्लैब लर्निंग आउटकम्स एट द एंड ऑफ द सेशन द लर्नर्स विल बी एबल टू एक्सप्लेन द प्रोसीजर ऑफ determination of effective span and effective thickness of one way slab and determination of main and distribution reinforcement required for the slab and they will also be explain they can explain the sketch the reinforcement arrangement in one way slab introduction any slab supported on two opposite edges in one is one way slab as shown below here it is shown that there is this is a one way slab it is supported on only two edges one is this edge and another is this edge that is along two long edges parallel to each other it is supported and this is shorter span so a one way slab is the one which only bends in one direction across the span that means this will bend only in the shorter direction a one way slab is one which bends in only one direction across the span and acts like a wide beam of unit width it acts like a, a wide beam of 1 meter width or unit width a slab is assumed to be made up of such similar strips placed side by side and acting independently so this way we assume regarding the one way slab the analysis of one way slab is same as that of analysis of beam of 1 meter width the slab which is having ly by lx ly is longer span lx is small smaller span so that means this span is ly and this span is lx longer span is ly shorter span is lx ly by lx ratio being more than 2 is considered as one way slab that means whenever we consider any slab if we find the ratio of longer span to shorter span more than 2 then and then only we can design it as one way slab then the design steps for one way slab the first step we have to find out the effective span le of the slab as per clause number 22.2 of is 456 2000 as per clause number 22.2 of is 456 2000 that is regarding control of deflection so effective span of the slab shall be lesser of the two for simply supported slabs so effective span le is equal to clear shorter span plus small d that is effective depth or effective span le is equal to center to center distance between the supports in shorter direction le is equal to center to center distance between the support of the in shorter direction that is the clear span in shorter direction plus width of support it is then assume effective span of the slab effective out of these two whichever is small that we are supposed to take as effective span so assume effective depth of the slab next is you have to assume the effective depth of the slab so which is required for this above determination of le so therefore it is based on control to deflection that is 23.2 23.2 it is control for deflection and 22.2 it is for effective span 22.2 is for effective span and 23.2 is for control of deflection the depth of the slab depends upon the bending moment and the deflection criteria the trial depth can be obtained by using d is equal to l by 22 to l by 28 d is equal to l by 22 to l by 28 whereas in is 456 2000 if you refer clause 23.2 you, you will get uh effective depth d equal to 20 that is l by d ratio as 20 where it is we take between 22 to 28 because if you take the uh, 
the constant F1 that usually work out to be 1.2 or 1.5. Therefore, usually we take the L by 25 that is in between L by 22 to L by 28. So this is a question for you people. The effect to span LE for a simply supported slab is given by LE is equal to clear shorter span plus D that is effect depth or LE is equal to center to center distance between the supporting shorter direction. Option C, maximum of A and B. Option D, minimum of A and B. So can you please guess and tell me which is the right option? Effective span LE of for a simply support slab is given by D option that is minimum of A and B. Next you have to find the loads on the slab. The load on slab comprises of dead load, floor finish and live load. The loads are calculated in kilo Newton per meter. Dead load is equal to it is overall depth of the slab in meter into 1 into 25. 25 is unit weight of concrete, 25 kilo Newton per cubic meter. So this will multiplication will give you load, dead load in kilo, dead load of slab in kilo Newton per meter. Floor finish usually we take 1 kilo Newton per meter square. It is 1 into 1 that is 1 kilo Newton per meter. And the line load WL it is assumed as 2 to 5. It is assumed between 2 to 5 kilo Newton per meter square depending upon the occupancy of the building as per IS 875 part 2. Usually 2 kilo Newton per meter square for residential building and 3 kilo Newton per meter square for public building. If I calculate WL for public building it is 3 into 1 it is 3 kilo Newton per meter for public building. Find MU and VU. MU is equal to 1.5 times WD plus WL into LE square upon 2 and VU is equal to 1.5 times WD plus WL into LE divided by 2. Determine MU limit as per IS 456 clause number G 1.1 C. So that is given by MU limit is equal to constant into FCK that is characteristic strength of concrete into B into D square where constant is 0.148 for mild steel. 0.138 for Fe415 and 0.133 for Fe500. So one has to uh, compare MU limit with MU. One has to compare MU limit with MU. If MU is less than MU limit, it is called under reinforced section. If MU is greater than an MU limit, then it is called a war reinforced section, which is not allowed by IS456-2000. Therefore, if you get any time MU greater than MU limit, then only option with us is to increase the depth of the slab until MU is less than MU limit. Next, you have to find out the area of reinforcement required as per clause number G 1.1B of IS 456-2000. So, which is given by MU is equal to 0.87 FY ASTD into 1 minus AST FY upon BDFCK or you can even calculate AST directly. It is 0.5 FCKBD divided by FY into 1 minus square root of 1 minus 4.6 MU upon FCKBD square. So assume diameter of the bar usually 10 mm or 12 mm and find spacing of the reinforcement which is given by area of 1 bar into 1000 divided by AST which is calculated here above. Provide the main reinforcement along the shorter direction. Please remember always we have to provide the main reinforcement along shorter direction because the slab bends in shorter direction first or load transfer is by shortest route. So therefore along the shorter uh, direction you have to provide main reinforcement. The slab is having spacing with a spacing less than whatever we calculate above, determined above. Find the distribution steel. This is main steel along shorter direction and along longer direction you have to provide a distribution steel. So distribution steel is also called as the steel temperature steel or it is steel in longer direction. 
or shrinkage steel it is also called as shrinkage steel it is also called as temperature steel that is in order to take the stresses induced due to the temperature or shrinkage of concrete we are supposed to provide a steel because concrete is very weak in tension find the distribution steel to be provided in longer direction over the main steel area of distribution steel is 0.15% of cross section area of mild steel and 0.12% of area of cross section of mild uh, for hysd bars that is high yield strength deformed bars that is fe415 and fe500 so assume the diameter of the bar usually 6 mm or 8 mm if it is 6 mm usually it is uh, mild steel if it is 8 mm it is hysd bar and find the spacing of the reinforcement by area of one bar in 2000 divided by ast that is area of distribution steel calculated provide distribution reinforcement along the longer direction of the slab having a spacing less than the spacing determined above draw a neat sketch showing cross section of the slab and the reinforcement detailing now please remember in reinforcement detailing we will have the main reinforcement along shorter span and the distribution reinforcement over it along the longer span and the in for the main reinforcement we have to make the alternate bar bent up so that is we require minimum 50% of the steel should go up to the end so therefore alternate bar will be a bent up for the main steel so these are the references used for preparing this particular presentation thank you thank you one and all